right, so good to know that you're still there. And the program is this morning on ITV on independent television. Now, uh, the issue of COVID-19 is still on. Uh, talking about uh, what uh, the whole world started fighting from December last year, 2019, up till now, we are still, you know, wrestling the COVID-19. Even here in Nigeria, of course, at the time, the number was going down. But uh, the way it is now, it seems the number is going up one more time. And I'll just let you see uh, the recent uh, release from the NCDC platform uh, where we have the coronavirus cases in Nigeria. We are told that uh, 63,173 uh, cases where we have 1,151 deaths. And uh, good to know we have 59,634 uh, recovered cases in the country. And of course, we are so privileged to have uh, Dr. Andrew Ifain Chukuobi, who is the incident manager and also is a consultant, incident manager, COVID 19 response uh, team uh, in Edo State here. So, you're welcome to this program. Thank you very much. Good ITV. morning. Yeah, we're going to be looking at COVID 19 and uh, the fear of second uh, wave infection. That it's uh, a big one now that uh, people are just weary of. A few days ago, we I saw the Commissioner of uh, Health in Lagos State, you know, making a very serious warning that we stand the risk of having a second wave infection. Now, you tell us, what is the situation like in Edo State? Uh, thank you very much. Um, in Edo State, uh, I want to s start by saying uh, warm greetings from the Honorable Commissioner for Health, uh, who was scheduled to be here this morning, but okay. due to other um, very, very pressing engagement. He has decided that I should come and represent him. Um, back to your question. Uh, with regards to um, the situation in Edo State, I would say, um, looking at the figures, okay, as at yesterday, um, uh, cumulatively, we, we have a total of 2,669 confirmed cases. 669? Yes, 2,669, yes, now. confirmed cases. Um, the active cases is 22. That's uh, the implication is that less than one percent of the total number of confirmed cases are active. Okay, so they are receiving treatment. That's what being active means. And a uh, total of 2,549 of them are recovered. So that's about 95 percent of our total confirmed cases are recovered. So. Looking at the figures, the do state is doing very well. Um, but back to your earlier question in terms of the response, because yeah. at the earlier part, this is about eight months into the response now, and um, uh, it has been a long journey. And um, um, with the support of His Excellency, we have been able to do a lot in containing COVID-19, which we know is a novel disease. and. Um, it's uh, an infectious disease okay, that has a high tendency to spread. And, uh, and there are basic things that we should do in order to prevent all those issues. But um, looking at the, the figures, in the past four weeks in the state, despite the fact that we are having um, um, a low number of confirmed, daily reported confirmed cases, there have been a steady rise in our Recovery. confirmed cases in the past uh, four weeks. Okay. And um, we are closely monitoring this trend, and um, we uh, are hopeful that with increased testing, we'll be able to get a clearer picture. What is the status quo with testing now in the state? Yes, in testing, the status quo with testing in the state is that testing has actually gone down. Why? Okay. Now, um, basically, uh, you recall that sometime at the earlier stage of the response, March, April, May, June, we had massive... Uh, campaign for screening and testing. Then we had the mobile screening activities spread across different locations. And we had to do that at this, as a state because we didn't have local data to be able to make projections. Because it's a new disease, we, we had little or no information about the disease in terms of our own locale. So we needed to be more aggressive. And so we were able to do that. And um, by the end of June, we actually had screened over 500,000 Edo residents, and we were able to uh, uh, identify over 7,000 confirmed cases as at that time. Okay? Now, we had to scale down because with the projection we made, we found out that by August we'll peak. And 
the numbers will begin to rise, uh, fall down, decline. So we found out that, that uh, looking at our epidemiological model, that we picked at the middle, of second August. or, or to third week of August, and the indication is that the numbers will begin to drop. And so we had to downscale the massive uh, engagement that we had in terms of our screening and testing uh, abilities as at that particular point in time. And so over time, we are screening and testing, but the numbers doesn't seem to be increasing. Mm. And that speaks to the fact that when you have an uh, outbreak, it begins to rise, it peaks, then it declines. Those are the three phases in terms of an epidemic uh, outbreak. So um, over the past uh, two months, we have seen a steady decline in the number of daily reported confirmed cases. Even as we are testing? Yes, even as we are testing. Okay. Yes, we are, we've seen the projected. It, it was projected, but we also saw it play out okay. in now, terms of the number of uh, confirmed cases. Okay, yes. now that uh, there's a huge suspicion that uh, there might be a second wave of this infection, yes. of the COVID-19 infection. Uh, now, you tell us, what modalities is the state government putting on ground uh, to also fight this? Excellent. Now, um, you know, Edo State is peculiar. We, we had anticip anticipated that there would or might be a second wave, okay? Uh, following the events of the elections, mm -hmm. after the elections, we now had the NSAS the issues, NSAS process, that, that, yeah. NSAS process. These are actually high risk engagements. And so as a state and as a response, we have uh, articulated uh, clearly how we intend to do it. We have actually decentralized sample collection across the 18 LGAs. We have made additional procurement of certain laboratory commodities. We have, in fact, in the past two months, we, uh, we had another laboratory certified by NCDC for Edo State. So Edo State has four molecular reference laboratory. The Lilly Hospital was the third, fourth laboratory that was certified by NCDC. That means our testing capacity in the state is high. So we should be able to test as much. In fact, but but, but the awareness campaign is low. I mean, yes, uh, yes. like uh, before the election, yes. we saw a massive yes. campaign, you know, from the state government. But we don't find that anymore. Yes, the, 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 uh, we actually we have identified that as a challenge, and we're actually working out modalities to start up that process again. You know, um, in the past few weeks, a lot of people had the impression that COVID was over over and done with. It was not just a, an Edo state issue, it was like a national issue. But as a state response, every engagement that we have, we help people re remind them of the fact that COVID is not over. You have a corporate responsibility as an individual to ensure that you do the right thing. You can see for this program, I'm putting on my face mask. Yeah. This is very, very important. Schools have reopened. The economy has reopened. So you're going to have mass gathering of people and we know at the earlier part of the response and it hasn't changed gathering mass gathering of people are high risk opportunities for the spread of covid if you go out and you don't wear your face masks you're exposing yourself and other persons to the virus in fact in the past one week we lost a patient so uh, to covid 19 so in the state and so you can imagine that so it's not yet over so the fear of the second wave is real as a state, we are doing everything possible to make sure that in terms of testing, we have everything needed to test as many people that will be identified. We have actually scaled up four aspects of our strategy. Mm. The first one is the screening. The other aspect is tracing, contact tracing. This is being scaled up at the state. Then we are testing and we have actually built confidence in our treatment. Then what about the other two? You just mentioned two. Yes, uh, talk screening, mm. testing, uh, uh, tracing, yeah. testing, and treatment. Those yeah. are the four strategies. I, I thought you were going to talk about the campaign because that seems uh, to be uh, a big uh, issue. A lot of people. Uh, it, are you talking about the political campaign? Not political campaign. I'm talking about the awareness campaign. Yes, no, because that's, I remember yeah. when it was on, there was this huge. You could see, uh, you know, uh, jingles. Promos yes. on television and radio, like what we do in independent radio mm -hmm. and television, we have our promos and jingles, yes. and they are still on. Yes, but we people want to expect that. more of this from the state government. That's what exactly, I'm exactly. Like I said, um, we we actually fine tuning that aspect of the response again, and I am very sure in the next couple of days to weeks you are going to see the billboards again, because I know you may be going there now. We are not seeing the, the signages on the billboards yeah. and all that. So as a response, that is a very critical aspect, risk communication. People need to know 
what they need to do as individuals to stay safe. Okay? Mm. Schools have reopened. I want to also tell you that behind the scene, we have been doing a lot. It's not just about the jingles. We have been engaging schools. Uh, we engaged uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, Education and the SUBEB and the private pro uh, educational uh, proprietors mm. before school reopened. Reopen. And we were able to engage them. We have actually engaged them in terms of uh, training, in terms of capacity building, and the expectation is high in terms of what they need to do. But are you making sure that uh, the safety protocols, uh, if they are adhered to? Yes, okay. we have a team of, uh, see. That go around? Yes, we have the, at the state level, we have the EOC, Emergency Operations Center, which is the command center for the response. And we have the rapid, state rapid response team. And for each LGA, there's a rapid response team. And so every school, okay, within an LG is linked to that local government rapid response stream, who weekly visits those schools to find out that they are complying with the necessary precautionary measures. They do that weekly. And apart from that, if, for instance, because schools screen students daily, if there are students who are suspected of having uh, signs and symptoms suggestive of COVID, mm -hmm. the rapid response team in the LG is activated. They come and take samples from that student. That student is actually isolated in a holding section because each school has been mandated to have a holding area which is like a classroom. So if that child begin, uh, becomes febrile in the course of schoolwork, they are immediately isolated to that particular location. The parents are informed and the rapid response team at the LG okay. is notified. Now, so that's what we are doing. Yeah, some doing. people say that uh, the basic uh, safety protocols that we were used to, I mean, we were told, um, such as washing of hands and uh, maintaining social distancing, not staying in crowded environment, that those uh, basic uh, uh, safety protocols have been modified. I don't know how correct that is. No, see, uh, it has not been modified. Now, the, this, the, this, the process remains the same. You, uh, in terms of um, hand washing, hand washing is critical in terms of control of an infectious disease because of the possibility of contact. Another aspect, hand washing with soap and water or use of your hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. I brought my hand sanitizer. It's very, very important. Then another aspect that is critical is the putting on of the face mask. That is critical because uh, depending on is, uh, uh, you have air droplet transmission, and if you're engaged in certain activities, especially in the health sector, you have the airborne transmission, okay? Or another aspect that, he, that we need to look at is the physical distancing yeah. measures, which is critical. This, this is very, very important. And as, we, as the fear of the second wave begins to come up again, people need to only go out as, uh, when it's essentially important. Try to restrict your movements. COVID is not over. Mm -hmm. And as we tell towards the end of the year, we know that temperature patterns globally and social uh, activities and social too. activities are going to also go up. Yeah. Okay? And so we are going to you're going to see it in the next couple of days to week. The campaigns, the jingles will come again. Uh, the billboards are going to come again in terms of people doing the right thing, signing as reminders of what people need to do. Okay? Um, and as temperature drops towards the end of the year, especially in the evening times, okay, you're going to have high temperatures at daytime, and at night you could have lower temperatures, in, especially in certain parts of the state, possibly maybe the northern part of the state. Those are factors that could aid transmission. But we also need to bear in mind the peculiarity of not just Nigeria or two states, but Africa, that is predominantly a young population. Are you, say, are you saying that the virus thrive in some certain uh, yes. temperatures? Yes, in lower temperatures they thrive more. And so if you look at the United Kingdom, for instance, they've actually entered another lockdown. Yeah. You know, and because of, because of autumn, winter, winter, so yeah. you're going to have, and even before now, those are the periods that you have spike in pneumonia mm. and all that respiratory tract infection. Mm. So they're actually working in anticipation. But what I'm also saying is that over here, we could have our own spike it might not be as significant as the first one that we had yeah but we have to also bear in mind that we need to do what we need to do to protect ourselves another aspect that we also need to look at critically is the fact that when you talk about second wave you need to also look at how much are we testing 
At the national level, we have not even tested up to 1% of our total population. When you say 1% of our total population, you should be thinking about maybe 2 point something million. People. And it means state governments are probably not doing the needful. I mean, Well, it's the state government are doing, at those states, for instance, our test per million is over 3,500. Total persons tested, that have been tested in the states, 10 million population. At the national level, mm. it is 2,700. Why those state has about three thousand? Three thousand over three thousand five hundred. So at those states, in terms of cumulative figures, in terms of our tests per million, mm, it is more, more than national. And that's what when I told you earlier on the support from the government. Mm. But you, you you need to also note that you now COVID is an expensive adventure. Most of the tests, especially when we had the peak at the peak of this response, yeah. on the average cost about fifty thousand, and people were doing it for free. So it's not a cheap adventure. And the state would need support from the federal government. And you recall some weeks back what happened to our medical store. One of those um, um, centers, uh, centers that had, uh, most of our commodities for response was vandalized. But the state government, we are reviewing the entire thing, and the state government is giving us all the support to make sure that we get basic things that we need to do. Yeah. And we're also hoping that the federal government will also support us more. Okay. Now, because of time, now uh, uh, that's your camera. I want you to look straight into mm. that camera and let uh, the viewers there know that uh, it is not Uhuru yet with COVID-19 in Edo states and even in Nigeria. Just do that quickly. So I just wanted to uh, use the opportunity to remind all of us that COVID-19 is not over. It's still here with us. And uh, as a state uh, response, the state is doing everything possible to make sure that the lives of our people are protected. Okay. But you have a responsibility to stay safe. Okay. You have a responsibility to observe uh, social distancing, physical distancing, and be an advocate uh, against COVID-19. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yeah, that's uh, Dr. Andrew B., uh, who is the student manager to Edo State's COVID-19 response team, telling us what we need to know about uh, managing the situation and please still do know that uh, the safety protocols the basic safety protocols are still very much intact wash your hands and always use your hand sanitizers and use your face mask that's the only way and uh, some of the ways that you can save yourself of COVID-19 thank you so much for uh, coming on the program thank you very much thank you so much it's a pleasure